Okay, then we move to the exam from uh, two years ago. Um, as you can see, it's kind of the same decision then as now, all written aids plus calculator, okay? So, so that is um, no change. Then we start with the first exercise. Uh, it says here, an event producer stages an outdoor event. For instance, one of the outdoor events, uh, outdoor concerts at the Rumstals Museum during the Jazz Festival. So we kind of have some feeling for what this is about. And then in A, I ask you to kind of name a set, or kind of write down a set of dependent variables you believe may influence attendance numbers or number of spectators for this concert. So this is kind of a creative start, isn't it? You have to kind of find out what may influence the number of tickets sold on an outdoor event concert during the jazz festival here. But if you look a little bit further down in the text, you see that I have already picked some for you, haven't I? Yeah, yeah there is the weather variable. We assume that the weather has some impact here. The ticket price, obviously. The weekday, perhaps. The artist quality. At least these four seems reasonable, don't they? Yeah, yeah the better the artist is, the more uh, audience will come. The better the weather is, the more audience will come. The lower the price is, the more audience will come. And, and if, uh, if it's a convenient weekday, then we would expect that to bring some more or some less audience. So basically, if you read the text here, you kind of get uh, a head start. But then, of course, the question is, is there anything else than these four variables? That you would expect should have an impact. So let's look at what I've written here. It says here, of course, that weather, ticket price, weekday, as well as artist quality should definitely influence the number of spectators on such an outdoor event. The main question to investigate here should hence be related to alternative variables. Is there some other variables you should point at which may have influence on the number of spectators? And the first one I name here is what I refer to as substitution. After your course in event economics, you should know what that is. So a substitute is something you can consume alternatively from the given good. So is there any kind of competing events around? That could, of course, influence your attendance numbers. And you know, in the Jazz Festival, there are competing events everywhere. So, of course, if there's very good competing events, you would perhaps expect fewer people on this concert, uh, which is outdoor. When new quality is normally assumed to be a variable which should affect attendance numbers. The higher when new quality, better seating, better uh, infrastructure in general should enhance the experience for the audience uh, and for a given price at least you would expect that a better venue quality should lead to more spectators. Of course the marketing part is important. This is something you do before the event of course and if you have been poor on your marketing maybe less audience would come. So marketing is also a variable which of course takes place before kind of the event uh, that must be included or at least could have impact. The final one I picked here was uh, the choice of pricing mechanisms, whether you've had pre-sales, that kind of stuff could of course also be interesting when it comes to the total number of audience showing up. So my question to you is, have I missed anything here? Have you come up with some other variables than these ones? That may very well be the case. It may very well be other variables than these ones. What about the sound equipment? Yeah, in general, you would expect it to be high class, but of course, given that it's not, it would, uh, would affect the audience, given that they knew it before the event. Okay? So typically, bad sound equipment does not necessarily catch up to a given event, but maybe to later events. You see, it's kind of a lagged variable. It, it, it has impact, but normally not for a given event, because the audience doesn't experience the sound before they are at the event, and when they are at the event, they've already bought their tickets, haven't they? So, of course, sound equipment, but it kind of behaves maybe a little bit different. Anything else?
Now we talked about artist quality, okay? What is artist quality? There's many dimensions, isn't it? It's kind of technical quality and performance. It could be looks. It could be degree of famousness. So there's a lot uh, more than actually, there's kind of a lot of things within this big variable of artist quality. Okay, it's maybe not as simple as I kind of put it here. Okay. Okay. In any case, if you answered all this, it would uh, give you a great grade. Um, B. Given your choice of variables in A, make a list of priorities, prior, prioritization when it comes to attendance number importance. Discuss and state reasons for your answers. Again, this is kind of a question which really doesn't have a correct answer. Okay, this is uh, something you kind of have to guess and be creative on. Uh, as it is an outdoor event, I would expect weather to be important. If the rain is pouring down, then I would expect less people to come than if it's sun. Uh, and of course, artist quality is always important. No, no matter what it is, it's kind of uh, it is. Uh, it may even override the weather. So if if there's a really big artist, who is the biggest artist to today? Justin Bieber, perhaps. Suppose they launch but Justin Bieber next year. Of course, there will be a lot of people, no, ma no matter the weather, no matter the price, no matter anything. So there are certain artists that kind of overrides all other uh, dimensions, so to speak. So I would uh, stick for this. I would put artist quality on the top and then maybe weather and then uh, everything else underneath. Of course, price is always important. If it's a ridiculously low or ridiculously high price, then you people may get suspicious. Of course, if you invite to a Justin Bieber concert with only 10 crowns a ticket, then what kind of fake is this would people think? And they will not come. And if it's uh, 5,000 crowns a ticket, they will not come either. Okay, So there is some limits here. But within reasonable limits, I would expect artist quality to kind of override price as well. Now let's see what I, wrote, what I answered here. <coughs> This question does, of course, not have a single correct answer. He, here I am looking for some discussion on the different chosen variables. In my opinion, the choice of artist seems to be the most significant. However, a price too high may still uh, lead to few spectators. Weather and weekday seems less important. I say here, okay. Uh, I was kind of uh, saying against myself here. I started saying that weather was important. Uh, less important, it says here. Uh, this is a matter of taste, isn't it? Of course, if, if you stage an outdoor event in Norway, I, at least the international audience would expect bad weather. So maybe it's not such a big thing here, but if, of course, if you, if you stage uh, an outdoor event in Phoenix, Arizona, and it starts raining and blowing, you will get, uh, yeah, people will get uh, terrified. They don't, they don't dare to come because it may be an earthquake or a typhoon or something coming. So it depends somewhat on, on the lo location, perhaps. Substitution, venue quality, or pricing mechanism seems perhaps even less important than other variables, at least if we fix our case to the Molde Festival. Some empirical evidence indicates that the right artist choice may dominate almost all other variables. Still, times are changing and audience preferences may change as well. Okay, so what we kind of have observed does not necessar necessarily have to be what we observe in the future. And uh, this is uh, typical for, for these festivals. If you talk to them, they, they say that the kind of the the consumer preferences are changing. Okay, so what was good five years ago is not so good anymore. Okay. Then there is a table here with some estimated parameters, so we kind of fake a regression here. Okay, that's what's done here. I just entered some numbers here. Of course, you normally don't get these nice numbers when you do a regression. So these are fake numbers, obviously. Um, and then there's some questions on how to use these to, to forecast, which comes on. The table on page one contains results of a multiple linear regression model, it says here, which is not true, of course, based on historical data, which it's not true either, done by the event producer for the given concert. Actually, this is just the fake data. Uh, the weather variable measures weather quality with value 5 as the best po possible weather. So. Uh, we have kind of uh, defined a weather variable, which ranges from 1 to 5, and uh, then if it's very nice weather, it's 5, it's very bad, it's 1. And, it's, and you have to kind of define the weather in these 
five categorical variable. Uh, the ticket price is limited to choices ranging from 100 up to 500 in discrete steps. So either you, you price it at 100 or 200 or 300 or up to 500 per ticket. This is kind of in accordance with what we see today. I saw that there's Pat Mattini is giving a concert in Molde in May next year, I think. I, th I, I bought tickets yesterday, it was, it was 400 crowns. So this kind of seems to be a reasonable price tag for Norwegian. Events. I don't know uh, f what your exports is, how it's in Mexico, Maria. Is it uh, cheaper to go to an event? Uh, it depends, also depends on the, the event, of course. Yeah. The artist. Yeah. The, be the better artist, the higher price. Huh? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that seems reasonable. <laughs> yeah, and then the weekday. One is Monday, one is seven is Sunday. So we have a kind of weekdays um, dependence here as well. Uh, and then finally, it's artist quality, uh, like the weather, with the value, value 5 as the highest possible artist quality. So we made some kind of artist categories. Of course, if you like, you can make these categories more fine-tuned, adding more numbers. This is a matter of convenience. This is one very normal way of doing things, in kind of doing these empirical studies on events. And then is, it says a new question, see here, look at the estimated parameters in the table of page 1 and examine the signs of the estimate. So let's look at the signs. Signs are always important when it comes to regression. And the signs should be in the right direction, so to speak. So if we expect increased artist quality to contribute positively, then it should of course be a positive estimate. And you see that there are three positive estimates here. Weather is positive, meaning that the better the weather is, the more audience we get. That seems reasonable. The second one, ticket price, is negative, meaning that the higher the price is, the less audience we get. So that is, seems also reasonable. And the weekday has a value which is positive, meaning that as we move towards the weekend, we get more audience. This could, of course, be questioned. Uh, there could be situations at the start of an event which are kind of more popular than the end. So this is something that you could discuss if you would like to. And finally, of course, artist quality has a very big positive estimate here. It tells us that it kind of influences a lot on the number of audience. Moving one category up adds 500 more spectators. That's the meaning of this number. So that was the first part of the question sheet. Do you find them sensible? Yeah, of course, that's the question on, on values here. And it should kind of correspond to your previous discussion. If, if, if you kind of had artist quality on the top, then of course that should have the highest impact, which is has here. Whether has higher impact than ticket price here? That is a question on measuring. Uh, on the way, you really don't know the measurements here. So, so in general, it, it's kind of hard to say w whether this is sensible or not. Maybe that's the best answer on that one. Discuss and state reasons for your answer. Then you have to write some sentences. Okay, that's the idea. At so certain questions, I'm asking you to write some sentences. Of course, when you write sentences, it's always a good idea to write nice sentences, which are understandable. And your handwriting is also good here. So if you write clear and in a way that I can read it, then I'm happy. If it's very hard to read, then I'm getting unhappy. Unhappy teachers give bad grades. Okay. So now you know how it works. So write nicely, write clearly, write good sentences. Uh, yes? And then can I bring the ink translator? Yes, you can bring anything you like. Okay. Translation is okay. Yeah, yeah, please, bring as many as you like. <laughs> but don't write it in Chinese, then, uh, then you will get a fail, okay? Nor Spanish either, Maria. Even though I know a little, okay. Then we are at question D. Predict or forecast the attendance for a Rolling Stones concert. Artist quality equals 5, ticket price equals 500 on a Saturday with the worst possible weather conditions. I'm just asking you to kind of show that you understand what this is, okay? So uh, that should be straightforward, shouldn't it? Then we need to go back to this table. And our forecast is then constructed by taking each of these estimated parameters, 100, times weather, plus, sorry, minus 2 times price, plus 3 times weekday, plus 500 
times or twist quality. And we, have been, we, we were given these variable values, weren't we, in this text. It says here that uh, artist quality is 5, weekday is seven. 7, Sunday, was it 7? Saturday. Six. That is 6 then, yeah. yeah. Price was 500. 500, and the weather was best possible weather, that's 5, isn't it? So it's just to compute 100 times 5 minus 2 times 500 plus 6 times 3 plus 5 times 500 and that would produce an attendance number then for our concert. Hopefully. Was this right, Jonas? You, like, you look like a question mark here. Is it? Maybe it's not. We can look at the solution. Maybe I made an, an error. That happens from time to time. Worse. Weather. It was the worst weather. Yeah. Oh, I got the wrong information. Okay, yeah, two times five hundred, three times six plus five. That turns out to be sixteen hundred and eighteen. That's, right. That's a nice uh, house, isn't it? Yeah, and it's not very full at the Rumstals Museum when you have sixteen hundred and eighteen people there. Actually, it could take up to five thousand, maybe ten thousand at certain locations. So this is a this is a low crowd then. Maybe it's due to the bad weather, who knows. What is the maximal possible attendance given this model? No, I'm, I'm, I'm asking you to optimize, okay? But that's easy here, isn't it? It's just picking the biggest numbers when it's a positive coefficient and the lowest numbers when it's a negative one, okay? So to maximize here, to maximize F, we should pick the weekday which is this was weather. Then we should multiply by 5. And then there were two times the price that the lowest one should be 100. Yeah. And it was three times the weekday, which must be 7 then. And it was 500 times artist quality, which would be 5. And then we end up with uh, another value here which is 2,821. Still it's kind of low, so this may be a, may be a slightly other version of Rumstals Museum, but it was, as always, I didn't kind of fit the numbers to reality here. Okay, on this exam a lot of the students found these questions hard. I don't see why, but of course they didn't expect them perhaps, that's, that's kind of, the, this is a different way of doing things than we did when we discussed it in the, in the lectures. So again, if we, you need, we need a certain amount element of creativity and understanding to, to actually perform on this exam. Okay. In the course textbook event logistics, uh, the terms short term versus long term forecasting is defined. Explain the difference between these terms. The difference is straightforward. In the short term kind of thing, you, you kind of run along with your forecasts. You discuss this in the football setting, so then you can kind of observe what happened in the previous game before you construct the forecast for the next game. In the long term case, then you produce forecasts for a longer time period. That's the explanation. Uh, some people tend to call this rolling forecasting, rolling horizon forecasting, some call it dynamic versus static, there's a lot of ways of defining this. And this guess whether applying short-term versus long-term forecasting may imply differences when forecasting is performed by the model here. Okay, then we have to go back to the vari variables here, and we kind of stick to these four variables, and this is our, these are the variables we use here. Uh, if we look at these variables, we can observe that the three last of them are not to be forecasted at all, are they? What do I mean by that? They are decision variables. We, we decide this, don't we? That's our decision. I decide the ticket price, I decide the weekday, and I decide the artist quality. So there is no forecasting problem related in short term or long term to these three variables. Okay, that's the first thing to note here. These are decision variables. So when you forecast something through a regression model, certain of these variables may be under your decision. 
That's nice when it comes to forecasting, because then you can actually decide what they should be. But there are others which are not. And of course, in this case, weather is one obvious one. We cannot do anything about the weather. So that is something we just have to take as it comes. And the, this question then boils down to the following. A long-term forecast, or actually the quality between long-term and short-term forecasts. Okay? If that is a major quality difference there, then we could hope to gain a little bit related to our forecast quality. I don't know how it is. What do you feel? Do you uh, in general, you would expect that short-term forecasts are better than long-term forecasts. And I think it's still correct. But perhaps not by a great deal. And it all depends on your horizon here in reality. In these kind of events, a lot of the tickets are pre-sold, okay? And then it doesn't matter, does it? Because when you sold the ticket, then either the audience pop pops up or not, it doesn't really matter, does it? Because it may have consequences for all the, all the other stuff around, your security and all that stuff. But uh, uh, So there's kind of normally a very small fraction, at least if it's a very popular artist, which are kind of sold at the day or the day before. So if you have a very good weather forecast for the day, which says it will be pouring rain, that, of course, decision may make you not want to go. Okay? So, of course, it could be a little bit, a tiny element, which could be interesting here. But as I believe I, I said in the, in the solution here, it's, it's really not crucial in this case. As opposed to when we looked at these football matches, where we kind of saw fairly big differences between these short-term and long-term forecasts. So in this case, it's perhaps not that important. And uh, especially when you have this pre-sales mechanism, it it's kind of becomes less important because people who buy a ticket before they kind of expect the weather which comes, doesn't they? It doesn't really matter because they've already made a, their decision. So it's in already calculated into their uh, their preferences, so to speak. Okay, that was that. Then it's a difficult one. Okay. Question G. Make necessary assumptions and discuss what artist costs this event producer can handle. A very open-ended question, you, but you, you, have some, you, you must remember you have some information here in this model. Okay? You have both revenue and cost information. Because you have the prices here. Okay? Prices are given, 100, 200, 300, so you can calculate the revenue here on each kind of combination, basically, all these verbs. So let's just look at how I did this in the solution. I don't think any students were able to answer on this, at least not very good. Uh, 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 we start... Uh, yeah. Answering the first part should be straightforward, it says here. As all variables except price has positive signs, we would maximize contribution by by maximizing variable sales, weather equals 5, weekday equals 7, artist quality equals 5. The price variable, however, contributes negatively and should be minimized. Now, is this the right question? No. Sorry. Sorry. Sorry, I must be a G. Okay. It seemed kind of... It seemed kind of famous. Okay, G. This question is perhaps a little bit trickier, at least that was the intention. Firstly, let us make a starting assumption on the event producer here. Let us assume that he or she is greedy. We need to do that, don't we? Because uh, we still haven't described anything about the preferences. So the greed here would be to... The reasonable greed assumption here would be profit maximization. Okay, we would kind of seek to maximize the difference between revenues and costs. Without such an assumption, it's hard to make anything out of this exercise. Given greed, the product producer would like to maximize profit. In order to find possible for possible profits, revenues must be calculated, obviously. So let's start by doing so. Furthermore, we need to look at our model, silly as it is. It is the only description we have. And it seems obvious that this model must govern the solution of the exercise. Okay? So we kind of stick to the model we have here and use that. Of course, we are not... <laughs> the question here is actually to get a view of the revenues. Because you're asked what kind of costs you can, can kind of defend. And of course we don't have information on the artist costs here. Okay? Obviously there's differences. 
moving up in co categories for artists, of course that will cost more. So the idea here is basically to get some estimates on the revenue side to kind of see how much cost can be bear. That is the idea of the, the exercise. Again, no, given greed by the producer, he should obviously choose to stage his event on a Sunday. Of course, then there's the biggest demand. And uh, again, we really don't know whether that costs more than on another day. But we can perhaps assume that it's no cost differences between different days. That is an assumption, okay? But if it's not, if it, if it is cost differences, then of, then of course we can't do this. This is a simplifying uh, assumption here. <coughs> In practice, this day may simply not be available, but uh, according to the information we have, the producer may choose this variable freely. As Sunday produces more attendance regardless of price, quality choice, it must be economically sensible to choose it. What about weather? This is a variable outside of the pro producer's choice, we cannot ch choose it. So to make things easy, let's just assume average weather. Okay. But again, of course, you could have many dimensions here, looking at all possible revenues, kind of getting a, a huge multidimensional cube here. You will see we will end up with a table here. <coughs> yeah, so we stick to uh, using Sunday, then we have defined that variable. We stick to using uh, average weather, 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 which is tree, I think, isn't it? Yeah, it's, it's the tree, yeah. Uh, didn't we skip any questions now? I seem to recall that there was something else. Yeah, in E here, we skipped one, didn't we? Find also average or expected attendance given equally probable weather conditions for the given event. Of course, in that case, you just use tree as the average weather and compute the same way. Okay, that changes the numbers slightly. Sorry about this, I missed the part of question E. Yeah, okay. Given the choice of day and weather, the attendance contribution accounts to 3 times 100 plus 3 times 7, which is 321. So this is kind of the base number we have, isn't it? When we choose, when we make this simplifying assumption. In which it says here, uh, which uh, attendance amount the producer will get independent of other decision variable choices. Now, various revenue numbers can easily be calculated. Let us look at an example. It seems evident, doesn't it, that when it comes to artist costs we can bear, we must open up for the possibility of art artist costs dependent on artist quality. What we however avoid in order to simplify is artist costs dependent on our price choice. In practice this could actually be a case and would make the following analysis significantly harder. Anyway, we are free to make the assumptions we like here, and, and we do so. And of course, that is something you always should utilize on the exam. If, if, you, kind of, if you feel free to, to, to kind of put values to stuff, you do that in a way which kind of is as easy as possible. So back to the example. Suppose the producer chooses artist quality equals 1, ticket price is 100. Then our model produces attendance, doesn't it? We get minus 200 due to the price, plus 500 due to the artist quality, plus the original 321 from the two other variables which we kind of defined, which is 621. So given this choice, our attendance is 621. Of course, then we have to multiply 621 by 100 to produce the revenue for this choice. Which turns out to be 62,100, which is of course is the first number in this table. And then we can, what I've done in this table then is to vary the artist quality tag downwards and the price tag to the right to produce a full table here uh, so we cannot link up two variables and we let the two others vary to produce this table then we can look at this table though, can't we and see okay if we kind of are interested in maximizing revenue if we pick the lowest art artist quality there is an optimal point here in the price of 200 isn't it this is the biggest revenue in the first line. If we move to the second category choice, then of course we can see here that then we can achieve 216,300 if we increase the price one tag, which is the biggest number in this column. 
for the three last columns, it's the final price tag, which kind of produce, provides the optimal or the biggest revenue tag. So of course, the answer to a question is, okay, we would assume, wouldn't we, that moving in this direction increases costs, okay? Because the artist here, he costs more, the better he is. So then the question is, okay, can I get a big head artist for a value slightly smaller than this one? That could be okay. Well, if I could, maybe I could go here. Maybe I could, could, could get this quality for 30% lower amount, then I can pick that one. So this is kind of decision to support for an event producer. If you produce this kind of table, then you can use it to negotiate with artists saying, okay, I cannot go higher than this number here. In that case, I will run with a deficit. So this was kind of what I ended up with when I did this. But th the main idea here is, of course, to, 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 to note that the, this exercise contains price information, meaning that you actually can compute revenues. Of course, you could have done it much more advanced than this in all full four dimensions. Okay, this is only a two-dimensional part looking at all weather positions and all, uh, what was the final one? It was weather, it was price, it was a weekday, yeah, we, we, we picked the Sunday, didn't we? Of course, then you could say to a certain artist, okay, I've calculated that uh, I am able to get the revenue of so much for your category, given that you have it on the Monday, and so on, Sunday, and so on. And then, of course, you could ask, okay, I can do it on a Sunday if, if you give me that, okay? So this is kind of a, a neat way of or getting decision support uh, in such a case. And we kind of all built this on a, on a regression model. So as it says finally here, the squares in the table denotes the maximum revenue in each line for each choice of artist quality. Given our assumptions, this kind of analysis provides sensible decision support for the event producer as he, for any artist, quality choice can see immediately what revenues he has to cover possible to cover possible artist costs. Simultaneously, optimal pricing is also a consequence, okay? Because you find the optimal price as you move uh, horizontally, vertically, horizontally. Horizontal. Horizontally, yeah. The horizon, yeah. Vertical, yeah. I, I. Just like left and right, you know. This is right, this is left. Yeah. It's the opposite for you, isn't it? <laughs> That's the reason why we have north South, East and West, isn't it? To avoid... Yeah, I think so, yeah. Okay, time for a break. Any questions? To this one? Then it's time for a break. Unless there is any questions. Joe, do you have one? Are there any mistakes in the numbers here? No, 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 it's, it's just me. It's just you? I, I can't really see where this table is, like, how we can... How, how can you get it? Yes. Please. Okay. Now, you see, I compute... Uh, then, I, of course, I have to run through all these ones, okay? If I start with an artist quality of one, okay? Let me see. I start with an artist quality of one and a ticket price of 100, okay? Then I get minus 200 from the ticket price. Then I get 500 from the artist quality. And then I get this added number, which is fixed. That produces 621 in the audience. And I must multiply that with the price of 100. Each of them will pay 100. 621 times 100 produces 62,100. And then I move into this point. Okay? Then I have to change something here, don't I? I have to change the price to 200. But I also will change my estimate here, because uh, instead of getting minus 200, now I get minus uh, 2 times 200, minus 400, don't I? Yeah. Then, uh, then the artist calls it the same, so it's still 500, so it goes slightly down, doesn't it, this number? I, I am not able to take it in my head now, okay? But this is slightly smaller, but of course you have to multiply with twice as much. And then, then you get a bigger number here, which is not twice as much, but a little bit more. Do the same here, move up to 300, change that one, stick to the 500, get an even smaller number, that multiplied by, by 300 instead of 200. And so we move on finishing this line. Then you move to the next line, 
Then you change the other variable. Now it's the artist quality that changes. So instead of getting 500 times 1, you get 500 times 2 here now. So you get 1,000 suddenly, OK? And then, of course, the same exercise with the process, finishing up the line, that line, moving through the whole table. You can do this uh, in Excel, for instance, straightforward, or you can do it on paper. Was this clear? Yes. Very nice question. Thank you. So never hesitate to ask, OK? But suppose if you sit like this, then I can ask you instead. Yeah. OK, then we take a break. <laughs>